the heart of a growing church. We continue to study Acts chapter 4 verses 32 through to 37. Let's read the text. All the believers were united in heart and in mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them, because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. For instance, there was Joseph, the one of the apostles, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. Lord, help us that even as we continue to study this text, the Lord, you will help us to understand your truth and be able to continue walking in it. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. From our text, we continue to look at the community of the other believers, the early church. And uh, we continue to see what happens, some of the things that they continue to do to show how they continue to grow and continue to encourage one another as they, as they even continue to advance the kingdom of God. From our text, we see there's unity in the community of believers. In a text we've just, uh, we've just read, we see that the community of believers was united, both in heart and in mind. This would mean that none of them would say, this is mine or this is yours. So everything they owned, like belonged to everyone that would be a part of that fellowship. We're talking about their possessions, things they had in common. Everything was not attached to an individual, but it, 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 was, it, was, it belonged to the entire community of the believers. And their unity in heart and mind was because they all had a belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was, as, as, was at the center of their belief and was their essence of coming together and bringing their minds and hearts together. So this means that their unity in heart and mind was tuned in Christ. The more they valued one another, the more they remained committed to the mission. And the mission was to proclaim Jesus to the entire uh, community and to tell others about Jesus. And earlier we, we saw that Peter and John were cared for by the believers. That when they received their reports, uh, they prayed together for courage and boldness so that they can continue to advance the kingdom of God. So indeed, their unity in heart and mind and also being tuned in Christ helped them not to look at their own interest, but also to project and advance the mission, but also support one another. I believe that these people may have had their own passions, or they, everyone may have had a different way of doing things. But their unity in Christ, both in mind and heart, let them not to withhold anything. And even when we read this text, we see that they never withhold their own interests towards supporting and caring for one another. So caring and supporting one another was at the core of their meeting. So they are united in heart and mind because of Christ Jesus. Number two we see that they are committed to sharing and caring for the needs of others. Their unity was because they were 
they, they, they had one faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this led them to share and care for the needs of others. Now when we read the text, who shared? Everyone shared. Even as they shared, no one claimed that anything be belonged to him or her. And when did they share? They shared all the time. Whenever anyone had need, we read in uh, verses 34 through to 35, there were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. This is God's heart for his people to care for those in need. We see a community that is empowered by the Spirit and the community that is united in one heart and mind. And it pays attention to the needs of those who are around them. But we believe that they, they, pay, they pay attention to the needs of those around them, but they also pay attention to the needs of the people who are even beyond their circles or beyond their community. That means they even reached out to those who may not have been belonging to their community of believers. And what did they share? They shared everything. No one claimed that this is my possession or this was their own possession. Truth be told, sometimes we find it difficult to truly be generous, just like the believers we read about in this text. You know, the early church lays a challenge for us today. Being generous and truly kind is easy to say, but it is really difficult to apply. You and I need to think about how we treat others. We need to be involved in the lives of people. If we are to know and pay attention to their needs, we need to be involved in their lives. A generous person is a relationally involved person. For me to be kind, truly kind, I need to be involved in your life. We see this happening in the early church, the community of believers. They were involved, they, re they related with one another. And so they could know that this person was in need and they could know how to be of help. So a generous person, a truly kind person, is a person who is relationally involved in another person's life. The other thing we see in this community is they were empowered. The believers were empowered both in word and in deed. They were declaring and giving testimony of Jesus, but also cared for those in need. They continued to teach about the resurrection. They learned that this same power of Jesus resided in them and gave them courage and confidence to speak without any fear because they knew that they were secure in the Father's arms. But they also understood that they had received and deserved favor of God. And this reality made them to delight in the spiritual blessings that they have in Christ Jesus. And this made them to loosen their grip on the material possessions. But to be generous and to help those who were in need. Something interesting about this text is that there was no one needy amongst them. This is not because they were too rich and loaded with all loads of material possessions, but because they were generous, they were truly kind, they were involved, they were relational in the lives of people, they were involved and attached to other people in their community. And it helped them to pay attention to their needs. For one to be generous, for one to give, it doesn't mean that they should be rich. If you are rich, you need to see this as both a blessing and a responsibility from God. God has gifted you, but you are accountable for what you do with the resources God has entrusted to you. 
1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through to 19. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. This is a scripture we need to put at heart. Barnabas, like others, didn't have to sell the land and bring money to the apostles, but he chose to do it anyway. This is an act of generosity. And it demonstrate, demonstrated how Jesus, how he loved Jesus, but also how he loved people more than the material possessions that he owned. And the fact that he laid all the money at the feet of the apostles, that he brought everything he had sold, the money, to the apostles, is an act of submission, humility, and trust. He trusted the apostles to distribute it accordingly. Barnabas never wanted credit for himself. He wasn't interested in self-glorification, but in God's glory. So friends, as I conclude from our text of reflection today, we are reminded to take to heart this message and respond by being united when we, are when we are meeting in a fellowship of believers, when we are united, when Christ is at the center, the focus of our engagement, we are able to draw attention to the needs of those in our community and be able to help those in need. But also we are called to be generous and truly kind. And this calls you and me to take a part in being relational, in taking time to building a relationship with the people in the community that we belong to. Because when we build that relationship, then we can be involved and know how we can support them. My prayer is that we may be people who look for ways to give generously, sacrificiously, and gladly. May the truth of the resurrection and the deeper grasp of Christ's grace make us a Barnabas, like servants. May such generosity lead to a wonderful experience of unity in the community of believers. May God bless you.